March 15, 44 B.C. The assassination of Julius Caesar. You are there. Walter Cronkite reporting March 15, 44 B.C. In Rome today, a political event of extraordinary significance is scheduled to take place. Here at the center of world economic and military power, there's a resolution before the Senate to make Julius Caesar king. This means that the governing body of the oldest living republic is about to vote itself out of existence and become a monarchy. For the past month, the republic has been living under a law of national emergency and suspension of all constitutional rights. Officially, under this regime, Caesar has held the office of dictator, which gives him the power of life and death without judicial review over any person. And Caesar, who has received every legitimate honor the Republic can grant, awaits the offer of its dissolution, the imperial crown. In recent days, however, a strong movement has arisen within the Senate to head off this move toward a monarch. Just why the Senate sees fit for Caesar the crown is a question which has stirred controversy and sent rumors flying through the streets and into the outlying provinces and colonies. What the outcome will be depends on four factors. The influence of the army, which is known to be solidly behind Caesar, the courage of the individual senators for or against the move, the ambition of Caesar himself, and the attitude of the man in the street. There's no doubt Caesar has made a great many enemies in the Senate by his drastic reforms which have encompassed everything from a reorganized judiciary, a program for retired legionaries, the building of libraries, various public works, to the overhauling of the calendar system itself. But it's also well known that the majority of the common people would follow Caesar anywhere. If there's one issue, though, which could turn them against this man who has so tremendously raised their standard of living, it certainly is the issue of Caesar's becoming king. We have word that the Senate is about to convene. We take you now to Capitoline Hill in Rome. All things are as they were then, except you are there. It's 9 o'clock in the morning here in Rome, and for the first time in nearly 48 hours, the sun is just beginning to come out. To local soothsayers who keep an eye out for such developments, this appears as a good omen. And the general consensus is conditions are favorable for important decisions today. The senator now going before the altar for the ritual salutation is Gaius Cassius, for many years an important figure in the Roman political scene. He fought against Caesar in the recent civil war and commanded part of Pompey's fleet. When Pompey was killed, Cassius joined Caesar and was made one of his legates under Caesar's celebrated policy of clemency. This year, Caesar appointed him Praetor Peregrinus. But in spite of these favors, Cassius has violently spoken out against this move to make Caesar king. Let's try to get a word with Cassius before he goes into the lower floor of the Senate chamber. Come in, Todd Hunter. This is Todd Hunter. Cassius is coming this way. Oh, Senator Cassius, may I ask you a few questions? Do you intend to block the motion today to make Caesar king? No motion can be blocked in a free Senate. Are you opposed to the move to make Julius Caesar king? I'm a Roman. I'm a patrician. I'm a Republican. Naturally, I'm opposed to it. Do you think the bill will be passed? I do not. Isn't it true that Caesar overwhelmingly controls the Senate? Caesar is a very great man, an excellent general, and probably the most able statesman Rome has ever had. However, I do not believe that any Roman, regardless of where he stands politically, will vote himself into slavery and allow a human being to set himself up as a god. You believe then Caesar wants to be king? Caesar has said that he does not want to be king. What do you think Caesar wants, Senator? I think if the Senate dissolves the Republic, Caesar will accept the crown. How do you explain the fact that Caesar rejected the crown three times last week when Mark Antony offered it to him? Caesar is a realist. The crown offered by Mark Antony is a symbol only. The crown offered by the Roman Senate is the Roman Empire. As I've said, Caesar is a very able statesman. Thank you, Senator Cassius. There are a great many meetings going on here. There on the upper level is Senator Marcus Brutus. He's now being joined by Senator Cassius. This is the main opposition. From what I've been able to gather here, the question is whether Senator Carter will offer the resolution to dissolve the Republic and make Caesar king. Resolution is on the agenda.
The next question is whether Caesar will be here when this happens or await the decision in his palace. And the third question is whether the opposition under Senator Cassius will make a fight of it. This little group of senators in conference is headed by Caesar's main Senate floor whip, Senator Lucius Cotta, on the right. He is talking to General Decimus Brutus, one of Caesar's closest friends. There goes Decimus now. Attention, please. Attention, please. This final session of the Senate, this 15th day of the fifth consulship of His Excellency Julius Caesar, will now come to order. Where is Caesar? unexpected development here. Apparently Caesar has sent word that, yes, they're removing Caesar's chair, the usual procedure whenever Caesar does not attend. seems to be going on in that corner, a corner incidentally composed of strange bedfellows indeed. The man now listening to Cassius is Senator Lucius Cotta, who, as I said before, was to make the controversial motion today. I wish to speak. I should like to speak. For what purpose does the Senator wish to address the Assembly? I wish to make the motion that this session be temporarily reset. We will vote on the motion. We have just learned from Dick Joy that Decimus is on his way to Caesar's palace. It looks like the resolution will not come to a vote today. If it doesn't, then the problem will not arise again for the next few years, since Caesar is scheduled to depart for the Persian campaign immediately. We switch you now to Caesar's palace. Come in, William Keneally. This is William Keneally. We're in Caesar's private garden, and just behind the lattice, consulting with Mark Antony, is Caesar. This is Calpurnia, Caesar's fourth wife, a descendant of one of the most noble and ancient families of Rome. In fact, from the early kings who ruled before the Republic was born. Perhaps she can throw some light on the situation here. Pardon me, uh, can you tell us why Caesar hasn't gone down to the Senate chamber today? I asked him not to. On a day like this? Because it is a day like this. I feared for his life. Oh, has a plot been discovered? No. I had a dream. Last night I... I dreamt a pinnacle set up by the Senate in Caesar's honor collapsed. And when I awoke, a, a cold gust of wind blew open the doors of our house and chilled me. Death comes like a gust of wind cold and suddenly. I'm not usually superstitious, but when my fears and my superstitions coincide, I listen to both. And you ask him to remain? I begged him to. Then he won't go down to the Senate. He will not. Senator Decimus is here. Decimus is here. Hail Caesar. Are you ill? Does my health worry you, Decimus? If it keeps you from the Senate, it worries me. They removed your chair from the Senate floor. I felt indisposed today. Today your indisposition is ill time, Caesar. They want to make you king this morning. They can't make me king, Decimus. I am king. They can call me king. They wish to call you king, then. They can call me king another day. Who wants to make me king, Decimus? Many say you do. You believe that? I know Caesar too well to believe that he would deliberately arouse the people of Rome against him for the vanity of wearing a crown. 
Nevertheless, the senators are worried about the reaction of the people to the rumor. You're an old friend, Decimus. And in my will, as you know, you are designated as my second heir, after my nephew Octavius. What do you advise me to do? Come to the Senate with me. And if I do? They will offer you the imperial crown. And then? Refuse it. Thank them for the great love they have for you and refuse it. Tell them what they have forgotten in admiring your great achievements for Rome. Tell them any crown is too much for the Roman people, and no crown great enough for Caesar. I might blush when I say it. But my friends can say it for me. If anyone loves me enough to offer me a crown, let those who love me more refuse it for me. I would be honored to refuse it for you. Then be my delegate. And after the session is over, return and tell me what the Senate thought of Caesar's jealous love for Rome. But Caesar, the Senate is waiting for you, whether you accept or refuse. Let my friends speak for me. But you should be there. They should speak for you while you are there. They can speak for me when I'm not there. If you're not there, Caesar, no one will believe me. And if I am there, no one will believe me. As your friend, Caesar, I tell you, you must be in the Senate today. And what do my enemies say? What does Cassius say? That I should stay away? I am the friend of Caesar, not of Cassius. In that case, I'll come. But first, I wish to speak with Calpurnia. Tell Antony to meet me at the Senate. What we suspected is true. My dream was right. Fear made you dream, and you dreamt you were afraid. I dreamt you were in danger. Indeed, I'm in danger. I'm in danger of becoming Emperor of Rome and all the civilized world. That's danger enough for one man. I dreamt the pinnacle fell from our roof, and that can only mean that the head of this house will fall. It's dangerous to go down to the Senate, Caesar. It is. Especially for those who sent Decimus to bring me down there. They intend to speak against me today. Each coward has given the other a little courage. Well, I tell you that those who get the courage to speak today will die tonight. Caesar, don't go. I want to go, Calpurnia. It's a small ambition for Caesar to be king. I had one ambition, to be first in Rome, and so I am. The rest is Roman destiny. For myself, I prefer Egypt and that soft kingdom there to wars and campaigns. But you, Calpurnia, are a descendant of kings, and tonight you shall be a queen. And I, whom all the world knows as Caesar, shall merely be another king. Which is still in session. Caesar's on his way here. All right. Go ahead as planned. But if Brutus backs out, we can't allow any more vacillation on his part. There's no time for it. When Caesar arrives, Trebonius, engage Antony in conversation. But if Brutus, Brutus is an honorable man. Brutus. Caesar is coming. He expects us to talk against him. He thinks no one has the courage to act but himself. People love Caesar. Could not expect them to. No Mr. one but Caesar wants Caesar to be king. The senators he bought won't vote for it. And the Roman mob will sway to our side. What honor is there in being a Roman? If Roman and Britain, Gaul, African, if colonial, slave and Roman freemen all have the same absolute and eternal king. We must act now. 
before the idea in the air becomes a habit of the mind, we must act as Caesar would, as he will, in a moment, with one bold motion. The people love dramatics. They may love Caesar more. Only while he's alive. I think you'll respect the vote of the Senate if we're united in the firm. Only when he's dead. Brutus, are you with us? Here? Here in the Senate building before the eyes of the Senate of Rome. Here before the eyes of the world. Let them see how patriots act and tyrants die. The plans are set. We've no more time to vacillate. Brutus, I appeal to you. Today is the last day. When he defeated Pompey in the great civil war, you and I were condemned to die. But Caesar granted us clemency. I asked for no clemency. You accepted it, and with it the high post of government as I did. And they were all right. Not bribes to win our votes to make him king. If Caesar is king, Brutus, what is the Senate? In a monarchy, every man is either slave or courtier. This Senate and its senators are Rome. The Republic is Rome, and liberty is Rome. Without all these things, what is Brutus? What's Cassius? Is Caesar a friend of the Republic? He is not, I know that. Then how can he be your friend? Be with us, Brutus, and be numbered like your ancestors among the saviors of the Republic. Act as Caesar would if he were a Roman patriot. Would he stand aside? Or would he strike? I'm with you. And Rome is free. Stay close by Caesar's side. When the petitions are read, watch Simba. He will give the signal. Caesar has just entered the Senate building. The man with Caesar is Mark Antony. These men are trying to bring to Caesar's attention their various personal petitions. Usually this is done once Caesar has been seated. I said I'd take this later inside at the proper time. Brutus. I'm sorry to see you here, Brutus. I can say the same to Caesar. What I was sent for. When they send for Caesar, then Caesar must come. You seem to have sad thoughts. No, I was thinking how fortunate those great heroes are who die in battle before they can degrade their victories. I love Rome too much to die before I consolidate her empire and my victories. If you were only a lover of the Republic. So I am. But this Republic is now only a conspiracy of senators waiting for each new election. Can the senators lead the Roman people? They cannot. Be their example, then. I have another example in mind, Brutus. I want you to listen carefully. I've spent my life reducing most of the world to mere colonies of Rome. So here the Empire stands. Can this pack of jackals govern this empire? It cannot. Each year new wars break out. And the conquered people smelling a chance at liberty break out in rebellion. I know I've spent my life reconquering what quarreling senators have lost. Understand me. You want to be king. Not I. But Rome needs a king to unify the empire. Do you have a suggestion? I suggest that civil war, anarchy, ruin, and struggle are better than tyranny. That liberty is better than bondage, and death better than slavery. Take my advice, Brutus. Do not speak out against me in the Senate. Be my friend, and leave freedom of speech to my enemies. Caesar now goes before the altar to make his invocation for guidance. All eyes are on him, and once again, as earlier today, the awful tension rises here. Very large issues are at stake. 
I have reports that a detachment of horsemen from General Lepidus Army are gathered near the Temple of Jupiter. Now Caesar has completed the ritual, he is entering the chamber. Come in, Todd Hunter. This is Todd Hunter inside the Senate chamber. The order of business, of course, is interrupted when Caesar comes in. In just a moment, though, after Caesar hears the individual pleas, the session will again begin. Caesar's chair is being placed. They're lining up now to offer their requests for special favors. That's Senator Simba first, followed by Casca, then Decimus. You, Decimus? What brings you here in line with the others? Well? They come in my behalf, Caesar, to beg you to repeal the order which banished my brother in exile. Your brother was guilty, and for that reason he was banished. Would you prefer me to have him killed? Is this the Caesar known for his great clemency? I have nothing more to say to you, Simba. Who's next? Perhaps I have more to say to you. What? Simba, have you taken him? the city to our side. I posted the gladiators near the holy places. All right, we'll meet at your house, Decimus. All armed and with the troops we have. Where did the senators? Why did they run? Well, what now, Brutus? The wolves will quarrel over Rome and who will defend her? Senators of Rome. They are the wolves. You have your liberty. Enjoy it! I did what I had to do and what I would do again. He spared your life once. He spared my life for this day that I might save Rome from his tyranny. trembled with shock and terror. All the power and vitality of Caesar wiped out, gone. The impact was more than the mind could grasp. A stunned populace gathered in doorways and on street corners to repeat the news in hushed voices. Rumor was everywhere, a dreadful anticipation of the unknown future. And among the people, there was a slowly rising anger. The conspirators, finding an excited crowd in the square, tried to win them with catchwords of liberty and the republic. But the dazed crowd had no homage for phrases so long used to cover greed and expediency. Oratory could not pierce beyond the one staggering truth. Caesar was dead. The assassins, sensing an ugly mood just beneath the apathy, were now afraid and took refuge in the buildings on Capitoline Hill and surrounded themselves with gladiators. Caesar was dead, but the plotters and assassins had not seen beyond his death and had not planned for that necessity as well. And for 15 years, there was chaos and civil war in Rome. One by one, Anthony sought out and confronted the conspirators. Some died by his hand. Others, like Cassius and Brutus, whom he opposed with armed forces, committed suicide rather than face defeat at his hands. As Caesar had predicted, the empire was too great for a republic without an all-powerful guiding hand. And under Caesar's heir, it became a monarchy which lasted for 400 years. But in those centuries, there was no successor who could have stood as Caesar's peer. And as a result, the empire slowly deteriorated until the fall of Rome in 476 A.D. What sort of a day was it? A day like all days, filled with those events that alter and illuminate our time. And you were there. Mm -hmm. 